Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Tom Renner owns a large collection of vintage horse-drawn vehicles and implements, as well as a large number of antique farm and household appliances and tools. A few weeks ago, we spent some time looking at his larger field equipment. Today, we are going to look at some of the horse-drawn commercial and passenger vehicles he owns, some of the old and rare machines used on the farm, and early models of household appliances. Next to that here, we have a Bachelor Brome 1903 taxi. What's really unique about it is it's got the curved, curved glass in it. Back, back in 1903, that was really something. A taxi cab, basically, what they use in New York. Come out of New York. That fifth wheel turns all the way under. The Comes all the way around, right. It's cut under. Down this row here, we have uh, basically a hexel cutter for cutting silage and that. We have a, a two-hole corn sheller, a one-hole corn sheller, a grinder, some more different types of shellers over here. On this row right here, we have a broom sedge cutter. It's not a hexel cutter, but basically you laid your homemade broom in there and you stuck it through and you cut it off with this knife here to make you a nice straight edge to sweep with. This is a very early corn sheller right here. It actually has a dual rotor in it like the New Holland Combine's had. It's a little bit different tile style rotor than what the other shellers had. It actually predated these shellers over here. A cast iron sheller, a little later model wash machine right here. And this item here really struck me is, is different and strange. We talk about dual agitator wash machines today, how good a dual agitator is. And if you look at this thing, this was built in the late 1800s, and this actually has a dual agitator in it. Still in very good working order. The wash machine setting next to it is a early, early wash machine. It actually predates the dual agitator, and basically the rocking motion agitated the clothes and then you had the ringer back here to ring the clothes out with. There again, late 1800s. This is a home comfort stove, actually made in St. Louis, Missouri. And that, uh, uh, it's kind of unique. You basically had your coal or your wood fire there. Your hot water was over here, so when you needed water for washing it, you basically opened up this compartment right here, and that's where you had your hot water. This is also another home comfort stove. It's a granite stove made here in St. Louis, Missouri. Got some granite ware on the top. These came out of an old grain elevator, basically a test weight scale, and this was a grain divider. When the uh, older trucks and horse and wagons came in, there was a lot of wagons to, to check samples on and moisture on. This gave you an absolute even division in the grain, and you'd use, say, this one right here, for say test weight, and this one right here to test moisture, that way you could have a couple of people testing grains that came in, speeded up the operation quite a bit. This is a post drill right here, you used that basically when they were building barns or drilling holes, when they did the peg barns, you uh, put this on top of your beam and you drilled the hole through it. This would have been a bee smoker. Next to that over there is a popcorn popper, and next to this, is a Dr. Laguerre's medicine bit. Basically, you put this over the horse's head like you were putting a bridle on, and you dumped your medicine in here, and there was a hole in the bit, and the medicine came out, and the horse kind of lapped it up as you put it in there. Uh, it was either that or trying to get the horse to pour it down his mouth, and this was definitely the better choice. Settling maker, miner's bucket, apple peelers. This is a carbide light the miners put on their helmet and that. This was a cherry picker here, pitter. Put your cherries on there and it 
punch the pit out. That's an apple peeler over there, but this is a much fancier apple peeler. It actually cored the apple, peeled the apple all in one, one fancy motion, and it will go through a bushel of apples in very short order. Uh, blacksmith shop, we've got several different forges. We've got two different sized cone anvils here. Uh, this is a post drill that was in his shop. Uh, a couple of pedal grinders over here. Um, various styles of vices over here. This vice right here not only was a vice, but also served as a grinder. It's got a grinder on it. Different type of vice over here. This is a, basically a sheet metal bench. And it's this anvil here has a hard in it for the shears. And there's a sickle grinder over here on the wall. This grinder right here is for sharpening sickles. Over here in this corner, we've got another treadmill, and this is an emery. This was built in the late 1800s. Uh, it was patented in 1852, so you know it, it's, it is quite old. And basically the hawk, horse walked on this and it powered, in this case, a little, a little grain grinder, feed grinder, to make feed. And uh, it was just a way before we had uh, gasoline power to uh, eliminate hand power. This is an incredibly good shape for as old as it is. This is a 1892 uh, standard oil delivery wagon and basically this was primarily used from going door to door and delivering white gas, coal oil and kerosene primarily for lamp fuel and that, uh, at this period of time there wasn't many motor vehicles but if there was people didn't go to the filling station they primarily had at the most a 50 gallon drum but most people had just a 5 gallon can for gasoline and everybody had to have lamp gas and, and coal oil for running things. Um, we rebuilt the gear, rebuilt the box. The box has compartments to put oil and oil cans in. And uh, we just finished this here recently. Next to it we have a prairie schooner wagon. It's quite unusual in fact it has hardly any restoration done to it at all. The wood and everything on it is extremely good. It's got the, uh, the curved bite, basically the boat bottom. Not saying it would hold water, but that was the idea. You could actually float it across the stream and that. And uh, it's very unusual to see something this old that's still in this kind of shape. The top is about the only thing on is, that's been replaced. Behind this, we have a milk delivery wagon. Basically, you went door to door and you delivered your milk and that and uh, the lines came through the front of this here that you drove with but primarily these horses were well enough broke that it was just whoa they stopped and you smooched them a little bit and they went again to the next house and basically they took a rack like this full of milk bottles and you delivered door-to-door -door milk next to this we've got a a stagecoach this is a reproduction but it is a very good reproduction This is what people travel across the country in. And uh, naturally no air conditioning or anything like that. Uh, what does impress me though is the ride. It's, it, I've used the coach myself. It's all mounted on leather like they originally were. And the ride is awesome. When the horses take off, the coach rocks back like that. And uh, it does ride really nice. I'm sure a ride across the prairie on one of these things still was rough and it was uh, pretty unbearable, but this coach was probably as, as good as it would get. This is a fire tank wagon here, and that uh, I've got the hose reel and that down the line here a little further. And uh, uh, basically, they hauled the water to a fire, and uh, hopefully, you got there in time to put, put the fire out. It's hard by today's standards to believe you were going to go fight a fire with a team of horses and a hand pump. Basically, 
This had a hand pump that goes on it to pump the water with. This is a fire hose reel that goes with that fire tank over there. You basically had your reel of hose that went on there and, and you carried this reel of hose to wherever your water source was and, and then ran it to your steam fire engine or to that tank wagon over there. This is a stand hoist, wagon hoist. Stan Hoist is an old company, been in business for a number of years. They made wagons and hoists and different type of farm equipment. And that, and this Stan Hoist hoist is belt driven, and it's driven by a hit or miss motor, hit and miss motor. And uh, uh, the elevator here is a John Deere elevator. It's driven by a New Way air cooled motor with a in and out box here to run the elevator. And this was an old stationary elevator. Uh, didn't have a framework or a truss underneath it. Uh, we've run, got, run up into the loft of this building. We have a Conestoga wagon up here on this perch and that. Uh, it's an old wagon. Uh, has some restoration, restoration work done on it and that. But uh, it's primarily uh, outside of some wood replacement. The running gear and everything is an old Conestoga wagon. This is a collection of hog oilers, and that basically, uh, today you don't see this used anymore because most hogs are in some kind of a confinement operation. But years ago, most of the hogs were kept on pasture. People called them dirt hogs, and that, and they had more problems with lice and mites and that type of stuff. So basically, you took your used motor on and permectrum, and you dumped it in this area here, or in this tank right down in here, and the hogs rubbed on this, and they elevated the chain, that brought fresh oil up, and that got rid of the lice and the mites. And this is basically, the larger hogs that use this, the smaller hogs that use this. This is a watermelon oiler, same way, they rubbed up again. These holes picked up the oil, and it turned fresh oil up, and, and uh, that got rid of the lice. This is a, a different kind of a double oiler, a single oiler. This is a real unique one. Looks like an overgrown bowling ball, basically the same principle. The hogs rubbed on it, the oil came up out of these holes and, and coated the oil, the hogs back in oil and, and the permectrin got rid of the lice and the mites. It's a very, very early cedar in that. Basically ran it around, along on the ground. You opened one of the holes here. This little attachment here, scratch a little bit of your trench. This is primarily for, for small seeds. You filled the hopper right there close the flap, open the however many holes you wanted open to seed with and ran along the trench like this and planted your seeds in the garden. We got various stills set up for brewing your favorite beverage. There's three or four different types here. Barrels for holding your favorite beverage. Uh, this right here is a copper primarily used for apple butter. Uh, or whatever you want to make, but it's a copper kettle. Um, behind it, we've got several different stills. Uh, an old coal or wood-fired uh, stove here that you kept in the house for a heat stove and cooking and that. Um, like the other stoves downstairs, this has got a, a hot water area in it. Basically, uh, you kept water in there and the stove kept warm water when you needed to wash or bathe or something, you basically ladled out the water into a tub and did your dishes or whatever you need warm water for. This is the tobacco cutter. You stuffed your tobacco in there and it cut into small pieces for farmers who had a, like to chew tobacco. This is a, a, a copper foot warmer. You put your warm water in there and uh, uh, took it along with you when you went for your buggy ride on a cold night and kept your feet warm. That goes along with this, and this is a waffle maker. Really? You set this on the stove here. Put your waffle syrup in there, your batter. Warmed it up, flipped it over, warmed the other side, and there were presto, you had a, a fresh waffle. You made yourself. This is very unusual. It's a totally copper bathtub. Uh, came out of the house uh, very close to the shop here and that and uh, uh, you don't see many totally copper 
uh, bathtubs. It took a lot of cleaning. When I got it, you absolutely wouldn't know that it was copper. It had a lot of tarnish and corrosion on it. This is an early wash machine. Basically, that was your paddles. You threw your, your soap and your water and your clothes in there and, and agitated this agitator back and forth and, and washed your clothes in it. This, downstairs, we had a dual agitator wash machine. This is one that's just a single agitator. Basically, put your clothes in there with your soap, agitated it back and forth. What's, what unique is, what's unique here is it's wooden rollers rather than rubber rollers. This was very early. Another old wash machine. Uh, there's another set of them over there. These were used in the barn or making stacks and basically elevated the hay up into a pile with these forks. It was a lot better than trying to use a pitchfork or any other way of getting hay up into the loft or up on the stack. This was a grain grinder for making feed. Basically you put your shell corn in the top or your wheat or your oats and that and this basically crimped the grain or ground the grain and you caught it down there in your five gallon bucket or whatever you were, your basket and fed it to the livestock. Behind that's a set of bills basically used off of a off of a big forge and that. This is a Fairbanks scale basically with a, a platform scale. Um, this is a scale primarily used for produce, weighing produce and that. But one of the scales I'm the most proud of is this scale back here. This came out of a, a cotton gin in the south and basically it was for weighing cotton. You put your, you had a tripod that sat here with a big basket on it and it took 500 pounds for a bale of cotton. And you hung your weight out there on a 500 pound mark and then when you had 500 pounds on, of cotton on that big tripod basket, uh, you had a bale. This is an eight horse horsepower. Basically those sweeps laying there on the floor went into each one of these sockets like this. And you put a team of horse, horses on each sweep and the horses went round in a circle those ring and pinion gears powered this shaft, which you could take power off of any position, any of these four positions here. You used a set of knuckles or several sets of knuckles. You came out here and you used pillow blocks to wherever you needed to get this power, whether it was a thresh machine or a sawmill or whatever it was. The horses would go in a circle, they'd step over the shaft, or sometimes you actually bury the shaft slightly in the ground, and, that, and they would run your unit. Uh, down below we had this uh, 1853, 1852 uh, case thresh machine. This would have been a tool that you would have used to run that with, along with a unit we're going to see over here that has an overrunning clutch that would all go together for threshing grain. This is a little giant ice cutter. Basically, you took your big chunks of ice off your pond or out of your ice house and you threw them in there and you used that for refrigerating meat or used it in your ice box that used real ice rather than a plug-in or kerosene fired uh, or white gas ice box. Uh, Little Giant made this the same company that made augers and elevators in the later years. These were some stanchions that came out of our dairy barn right here. Uh, this was an early stanchion right here that came out of a barn in our area here and that basically was a wooden block that flipped up in the air and that and uh, quite simple but quite crude. You flip that up and then when you got the cow stuck her head through, you flip the clothes and a very a very basic but very good stanchion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back here we have several things a little unique. This basically put on a calf. When you wanted to wean the calf from the cow and the calf was in the same pen as the cow and then you put this on the calf's face and that and basically these barbs every time he went to nurse off a mom uh, geeks mom a little bit and, and she wouldn't let him suck and that would basically would wean the calf. Behind it here is a bull lead. Basically that bull, you put this in the bull's, in the bull's nose and you led that bull away that way you were out of harm's way 
when you tried to move him to another pasture and that, and he pretty much cooperated because he didn't like that pulling on his nose. This is an early grain scoop. I took this out of our granary. Uh, I used this quite a bit myself as a kid. And that, uh, when we put grain in a big granary rather than a bin, and you sunk up to your waist in loose grain and basically shoveled it out the uh, window into a truck. These are some milk cans that came out of our dairy operation years ago, and that different cream separators, and that. There's a centrifuge right here that basically you used for checking the butter fat level in your milk. That spun around real fast and it separated your, your milk from your cream and told you how much butter fat each particular cow was, was giving. Because back in the day, butter fat, and even today to some extent, was, was valuable. You got paid for your butter fat count. This is a collection of butter churns. And uh, this particular churn is a thinner. And it had all kind of paddles in there, basically. You know, as you turned it, down the paddles broke it up and separated your, your butter from your milk. And everybody had a little different wrinkle on how they were going to do this, what was the best way. This was another one right here. That had a, a paddle with holes in it and a churn. And that spun your milk around until your butter separated. This is one basically a barrel churn. You spun the milk around in there. It separated it. Another different pattern right here where they had paddles with holes in it and that separated the butter from the milk. This one right over here I thought is very unique. This is a Davis swing churn and basically you rock the milk back and forth in here like you're rocking a baby and I think this is a 10 gallon churn here. And basically you swung it back and forth like this so you can separate the butter from the milk. These are various types of saws. We've got this saw right here and the one behind it that basically used the lever. You crank the lever back and forth and you clamp your clamps there around your log and, and saw it into pieces. These are various types of, of saws that you use for cutting firewood or cutting a tree down. Took two men, one on each end of the handle uh, to saw the lumber up. Right next is not to be confused with a wood saw. These are ice saws. They got much bigger teeth on it. And they're used in conjunction with that the riding plow that we showed in the earlier in the lower level and that and basically you scored it with the with the riding plow and then after you had it you either broke it loose with a sledgehammer into chunks or you had to finish cutting with the saw into, into pieces. This is something that's very unique here. This blade is laying on the floor goes into here into these handles. This saw gets propped up on your log like this, on your log like that. That blade goes in, laying there, goes in there. This is a wagon jack here, basically you stuck this in underneath the box wagon and that was just enough when you stuck this onto the frame of the box wagon, wherever you stuck it, whether it was there or there, that was enough when you lift it just to get the wheel off the ground so you could Grease the wheel bearings or whatever you need to do. That right there is a cast iron holder. Basically you put water or oil in that and uh, you had your wagon jacked up and you let your wheel turn in that and that oiled the spokes in the wheel and made them swell up so otherwise after they set a long time they'd get dry and your wheel would get loose. So that basically was a wheel oiler. We have a various assortment of ox yoke single double. Uh, some of them actually for calves they used in training to get calves uh, ready to use for for work in the fields. This is kind of a unique, this is a steel collar for for horses and there was no pad used with this. This was used like this for their various applications. These are a set of runners to convert a box wagon to a sled wagon and that when you got snowy conditions and that. 
That takes us through many of the wonderful items Tom has on display at his farm, but there are many more yet to see. In an upcoming episode of Rural Heritage on RFD-TV, Tom will show us a few more antique farm machines, as well as his amazing collection of unique walk-behind plows. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.